General Hospital spoilers reveal tear-filled moments, medical suspense, secrets and lies, and so much more. You won't want to miss a moment of this intense new episode. Sam, Kelly Monaco, is still not happy that Drew, Cameron Matheson, abandoned Scout just so he could save Carly, Laura Wright, from going to jail and blames Carly because she didn't do much to stop Drew from making this move. As Drew reports for his three years in Pentonville, so he can fall on his sword for a woman who dropped him like a hot potato when she found out he wasn't Jason, Steve Burton. Carly and Sam have it out, and Sam lets her feelings be known. The women somehow manage to clear the air as Sam will surprisingly forgive Carly for everything after Carly tells her how sad she is. Meanwhile, Drew receives a welcome gift to Pentonville, and he has no idea where it came from. It looks like Cyrus Renault, Jeff Kober, is going to be busy again and have a new friend. Willow, Catelyn McMullen, has been pretty much alone in the isolation room for weeks with a few visitors here and there, while Michael, Chad Duell, took care of their children at home and tried to get his mother to turn in his father to the feds. Now it looks like there is a change in Willow's condition, so TJ, Taj Bello, arrives in her room to give her and Michael the big news. He seems pensive, so Michael and Willow prepare for the worst. Does TJ have good news for them, but with a little caution Cody, Josh Kelly, finally agrees to meet with Scott, Kin Schreiner, about suing the WSB for destroying the necklace that belonged to Leopold Taub. Scott believes that Cody has the right to that necklace because Leopold is his father. He has no idea that Cody is hiding the fact that Mac, John J. York, is his actual dad. Will he be able to go through with that lawsuit? Dant, the Minix Ampragna, is the only one who knows what Cody is hiding, and GH spoilers say he becomes suspicious. Does he become suspicious of what Cody is up to, or is there another crime going on that he needs to solve? Could it be what Mac finds in a file on his desk? Finally, Sasha, Sophia Maxson, informs Gladys, Bonnie Burroughs, that Sunny, Morris Bernard, believes she is ready to end the guardianship, which freaks Gladys out. Will she decide to use Sasha to pay her gambling debts in another way? Sunny finds Sasha and Gladys enjoying a meal at the Metro Court. Sasha thanks Sonny for the flowers he sent for what would have been Liam's first birthday. He asks how the guardianship arrangement is going. Glady says it is a work in progress, and they discuss the big decision the deception staff made to save the business. Sonny offers Sasha a tour of the changes Nina made in the kitchen, a ploy to get her alone. Sonny asks Sasha to be honest, could Glady's try to block the deception deal? She admits she did at first, but she realized that the deal was good for the company. Sasha believes Gladys is looking out for her. Brad joins Britt at the bar, and she wants to pretend like it's the old times and it's them against the world. Ms. Wu approaches them and is glad to see them out. She tells the bartender to put their drinks on her tab. After Wu departs, Brad asks what happened between her and his aunt to make Selena suddenly like Britt. Britt admits his aunt blackmailed her to convince him to work for her and not go back to GH. Britt is sorry and understands if he hates her for it. Brad doesn't hate her and he likes working for his aunt. Brad also knows she's dealing with something big and asks how he can help her. She says he can go dancing with her at the Savoy and drags him out of the restaurant. Selena sits at a table and Gladys approaches her and is happy to see a fellow investor of deception. Gladys explains she's managing Sasha's affairs, including her stake in deception, for the time being. Selena tells Gladys about her private poker games, and Gladys asks her to tell her more. Selena gives Gladys a card with the address and password to get in and suggests she keep this to herself, as not everyone can afford the buy-in. Sasha and Sunny return, and Sunny says he didn't know Ms. Wu knew Gladys. Selena says they are more of business associates as she is a deception investor. Selena is glad to hear Sasha is on the mend. Wu departs and Sasha gives Gladys a hug. Gladys asks what that was for. Sasha replies, for always having my best interests at heart. Outside the coffee shop, Laura talks with Martin on the phone, and she says she's bringing him some food and support. She knows he misses Lucy, and there are a lot of people working to try and find her. Robert and Holly enjoy each other's company inside the coffee shop. Robert is worried about Anna and has no clue what her plans are. Holly thinks she's flying under the radar to protect her loved ones. Robert hopes she's able to get the goods on Victor. Laura appears, 
joins them and explains she's picking up soup for Martin. Laura fills Holly in about her two newfound brothers and that Martin is grieving over Lucy. She says her brother believes Anna is behind the shooting and a video doesn't lie. Holly blurts out that people lie and they gaslight others, and before you realize it's too late, they are using you. Robert asks if Holly is remembering what happened to her. Holly claims she isn't, she just knows what it means to lose someone, so her heart goes out to Laura's brother. Holly knows for sure Anna isn't guilty of shooting Lucy. Laura asks her if she knows something they don't. Holly simply says she just knows what kind of person Anna is. Holly excuses herself for some air, and Laura tells Robert that she thinks Holly knows more than she's letting on. Robert asks if she thinks Holly is working for Victor. Laura reminds him that he saw Holly whispering with Eileen Ashby, and she thinks deep down Robert knows Holly is hiding something. Outside, Holly remembers she was the one who shot Lucy in an Anna mask and planted the evidence in her car. At the PCPD, Dan finds Sam in his chair. He is glad to see her, and she says she has a surprise. She takes him to the interrogation room for some privacy. Sam produces a brown paper bag containing hoagies from Sal's, delighting Dante. They talk about the investigation into Lucy's shooting, the marshal that has been brought in to take over the case, and Dante reveals he suspects his father helped break Anna out. Dante asks Sam if she could direct him to any of his father's safe houses. Sam doubts she's still there if she was, and she guesses Anna's gone someplace more secure to investigate Victor. At Windermere, Liz and Nicholas find Esmond passed out in her tower room. Liz rushes to her and finds signs the baby is in distress and Esmond could miscarry. Nicholas insists they can't take her to the hospital. If they aren't taking her to the hospital, then Liz explains she's going to have to do a C-section without anesthesia. He thinks that is a big risk. Liz says she is going to do everything she can to save this baby, and there is a 50 50th chance mother and baby will make it. Suddenly, Esme springs up and yells, Get your paws off my baby! Eliza gloats she knew nothing was wrong with Esme that a little scare wouldn't cure. Liz decides to get back to what she was in the middle of when she was summoned. Nicholas and Liz lock Esme back up and leave. Esme can't believe she was outsmarted by Liz. Suddenly, the baby begins kicking, and Esme softens and says, I'm feeling you, Ace. Soon she's reduced to tears and cries, Damn it, Ace, see what you've done to me. Downstairs, Liz asks Nicholas what he and Esme are going to do now. Nicholas insists he is not involved with Esme and plans to parent this baby on his own. Liz wants nothing more to do with this, but he tells he it's too late for that. Since Liz didn't rescue her, Nicholas assures her that Esme will lie and make her an accessory to kidnapping. Nicholas is only asking her to go home and stay silent about what she knows. Liz notes, so I'm not just an accessory to kidnapping, but eventually murder. Nicholas says that won't happen, and explains before tonight he was going to take Esme to Cassadine Island. He plans to raise the baby and leave Esme on the island forever. Liz accuses him of being no better than Esme, but Nicholas says there is no alternative. Liz disagrees and asks Nicholas not to fly Esme to Cassadine Island. She says Esme will give birth here and he'll need a nurse.